how's it going everybody? Pragmatic Addict here. So we're going to be sitting down today talking about a video game. Yes, that one. So I have pretty much been sucking on the breast of this game for the past several months. This has been my most anticipated game in a long time, I would say actually quite a bit. Uh, I was saying in my playthrough that I did recently, uh, uh, first reactions, impressions of the game, that I probably haven't been this excited and this, like energetic to play games so early since like the launch of Kingdom Hearts 3. But in all honesty, the hype and the promotion of this game was just honestly looking so promising. I mean, they were dropping trailers like every couple weeks, you name it. They had a languages trailer, a gameplay trailer, a Gamescom trailer. They had a boss fight trailer, they had a launch trailer. Now important things to note, this is serving as a spiritual successor to Battle for Bikini Bottom, which is the best Spongebob game ever made. It is the fan favorite, it is a got a cult following, it obviously, yes, got a uh, remastered, rehydrated. So it is fair to say that this game had some pretty big shoes to fill. And like Battle for Bikini Bottom, you can see that this game was going to expand on that. There was tons of references in the trailers, even the announcement trailer for this game, probably we will never get a Spongebob video game trailer as hype as that. But there were some criticisms when the game came out, obviously before I played it and everything, people that got, you know, early review copies and early access, that this was a very short game. We're talking like four to six hours in average. So there was a lot of criticisms about the game and I do have some of my own in the review so without further ado let's finally review spongebob the cosmic shake so i do want to mention that for this review this will be more of n kind of like things that i decided to talk about notes i kind of took throughout playing my game so a lot of the stuff i'm going to be talking in this game is going to be kind of from beginning to end how i felt as the game progressed and things that i noticed here and there throughout my playthrough and the first thing that i want to mention is that this game cinematically and when I say cinematically, I don't just mean the cutscenes, but the details in all the characters, their voice acting, uh, how far out that they went to even add, you know, dialogue to all the NPCs, but also the variety of animations. This game does feel a lot like Battle for Bikini Bottom, where I think the reason why Battle for Bikini Bottom is such a cult favorite for Spongebob fans is because it not only does feel the closest to the show that the games have ever come to, but it does center on mainly the first three seasons, which this game does as well. There are, for example, like there is like a medieval world that did remind me like exactly of the first episode from season four, which is actually where I stopped watching the show. I remember when I was a kid and season four came out and I saw the medieval episode that they started out with and I immediately just lost it for that show. I, I didn't really ever feel the same toward it. So it's mainly the three seasons that kind of captured me and I think a lot of the other Spongebob fans and this one does that as well. You know, there's a prehistoric world uh, that features obviously Spongebob, which is a huge uh, favorite of the Spongebob show to fans. Even a snail race that I was just so surprised that was even included in this game. Again, just tons of Easter eggs and worlds that are very fun and very original and very exciting to explore and just as a Spongebob video game aspect to for fans to actually finally have that chance to play. For example, Glove World. This has been a world in all the past Spongebob games that I've always thought like, when are we gonna get this world? I remember in games like Revenge of the Flying Dutchman and obviously Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom, there were amusement park worlds, but as far as actually exploring Glove World, I'm just like, why hasn't that been in a Spongebob video game yet? And finally it has, and I do think that world, for example, delivered pretty well. So just as a Spongebob fan game, much like Battle for Bikini Bottom, this one does deliver in a lot of ways. Also expanding more on the uh, attention to detail, for example, there are NPCs in this game which we have not really had to this extent where it really does feel like Oh, again, a lot of this game does feel very reminiscent to Battle for Bikini Bottom. It is from Purple Lamp Studios, which did the rehydrated uh, game. Again, it is also serving as a spiritual successor. But it feels like that game, but the next step up in a lot of ways. Again, not just the amount of dialogue that they put in each character and all the NPCs, but this also does actually feature all of the voice talents from for each specific character 
that Battle for Bikini Bottom did not actually get the chance to do. Also, talking more about the worlds, this was another big criticism about the game is that there are only a few worlds and they are very short. Again, this is probably the shortest SpongeBob game we have gotten yet. But these worlds, I would say that they are more original than Battle for Bikini Bottom, but they are as exciting as Battle for Bikini Bottom's worlds. For example, Battle for Bikini Bottom, we got the fucking Sleepy Time world. Obviously, we got like the Kelp Forest, we got Rock Bottom, which also does make an appearance in this game, which is much better than the Rock Bottom for from Bikini Bottom. I'll say this, the Rock Bottom world from Bikini Bottom I think is more expansive and more memorable, but the way that they went with this one was very surprising and very exciting and I did enjoy it in that way. But one thing I want to talk about these worlds in comparison to Battle for Bikini Bottoms is that while Battle for Bikini Bottoms was much larger, larger and much bigger and had much more to it with a lot of more you know, missions and a lot of more quests. Because how much bigger of a step up this one was in quality, and how much they included in this game that they didn't do with Battle for Bikini Bottom, what, whereas this does feel like more of a cinematic experience and all that, there were times where I really did feel like I was part of the Spongebob world. And just exploring these alternate versions of these worlds, seeing all the direct references and all the new things that they had the chance to include in these worlds, I was just so excited to play through these worlds. Now as far as the game's direction, it does feel like more of a straightforward experience than Battle for Bikini Bottom where with Battle for Bikini Bottom you can kind of go at your own pace, you can jump to different worlds and collect, you know, enough gold spatulas to unlock more areas where this one you do always have like an indicator showing the next main objective you are just going through one world at a time and while it is more of a straightforward experience there are some side quests that are not at all a big deal there are very minor ones where you'll have to collect stuff for you know certain characters and if you explore the worlds enough you'll find little secret missions and secret parts of the worlds that could lead to trophies or just you know, little secret parts of the levels. Also, playing this game as a completionist and as an actual game explorer, there are a lot of skins that you can collect, which I was very excited about. For example, uh, when you pre-order this game, which I did, which it only was 40 bucks. So that's something I want to actually touch up upon about how short the game was and everything. I wasn't really mindful of that, like, or too critical about that at first because I'm like, well, it was only 40 dollars and they did include a lot of lovable skins and just... There are a lot of skins in general throughout this game that you can collect, a lot of costumes and everything that are direct references to some of the bigger classic episodes. I just gotta say, I never really got tired of collecting those, actually going on the hunt to try and gather as many of those as I could, and always seeing what the next ones that I was gonna get was always a fun surprise. Now this is something I definitely want to talk about uh, a lot, is that, again, while this is a very short game, like on average maybe four hours or so, there are only a few worlds and I think majority of them you could actually finish in maybe 30 minutes or less. And while I do think that these worlds are more or less some of the more standout worlds of Spongebob games that we've maybe ever gotten, after maybe like the first world or two, I did find myself taking a lot of breaks. And that is in the sense of like, after you kind of get over the hype of this game, and after you actually, you know, digest enough time where you actually start to see where the direction of the game is going to be more or less headed throughout. While the f game does do some different things, and it does do things that, you know, th persistent throughout the game that are new, you know, gameplay features and, you know, things like even like mini games. Again, this does feel very reminiscent to Battle for Bikini Bottom, and in some ways I think that while the game does do some things a lot better than B Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, where it's like the next step up, I do think that in the same degree it doesn't do things as well as that game. It just feels like the same company that made that game that was trying to expand on it a couple years later. It feels exactly like that in every way. But talking about the difficulty here, I know that is a very weird thing to talk about to discuss in a Spongebob game, especially one that is probably the shortest, but in the platforming aspect of this game, there were times where I was having trouble with this game where it was like almost as tedious as like Crash Bandicoot's platforming and even like the checkpoints too. Now I know that this is a weird thing to say, but I don't know if I would actually call this the most difficult Spongebob game. I still remember scenes from, you know, the Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom game as well as the actual Spongebob movie video game to this day that I was still like, Jesus. That was actually a bitch of a level. I mean, I know that this is a children's game, but goddamn, for a platformer, yeah. I mean, they, they didn't 100% hold back. And this game did feel like that. The last thing I want to mention is the actual story. It was the least 
grabbing in my ex in my uh, opinion. Where basically how the game kind of starts out is that SpongeBob and Patrick are in Glove World. They meet this gypsy mermaid named Madame Cassandra where they find this bottle that grants them wishes and it turns out that this bottle is not made for mortals. It is actually owned by King Neptune and when they release this bottle and do all these wishes, Bikini Bottom basically gets sucked up into this like black hole kind of thing and you are forced to go to alternate worlds of Bikini Bottom landmarks to gain Bikini Bottom back in one piece and save all of the characters from these alternate worlds. And I would say that it is more or less a very just kind of throwaway story. It's nothing huge and especially the end of the game while I do think that the final level was very fun. It was especially by then like how it wrapped up and everything I was just like okay this is definitely a plot that they just kind of went with because they wanted to make another Spongebob game. And at the end of the day, guys, it's just a decent Spongebob game. Again, it is very reminiscent to Spongebob Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. In some ways, it does some things better. In some ways, it doesn't quite reach that. But at the end of the day, it is just the next step up, more or less, from that game. And again, yeah, it's just, it's just another fine Spongebob game. And overall, I will give this a positive review. So yes, guys, that is going to do it for this review of Spongebob the Cosmic Shake. Let me know of those that have played the game, what you thought of it. I'm sure most of you have finished it by now. But as always, guys, let me know what you thought of the video down below. My next review will be tomorrow of Knock at the Cabin. I'm seeing it in the morning with my sister and my mother. So look forward to that review tomorrow. But yes, guys, as always, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.